I'd like to take this opportunity to um, kind of challenge you guys. Um, let me digress a little and just try to paint a picture for you. We dug a hole and I put one wheelbarrow of chicken manure, which is a uh, hazardous waste, one wheelbarrow of cow manure, uh, also hazardous waste, one uh, wheelbarrow of pig manure, hazardous waste, and I also dumped, just to make sure we're doing everything really bad, 55 gallons of gasoline and 55 gallons of diesel, which is toxic. And just to make sure I covered all bases, I want to put uh, one bucket full of nails so we cover all the iron deficiencies. And put some brown rice vinegar, sugar, and to cover everything with natural farming, I'll put cinnamon sticks, angelica, ginger, all the nice things. Then I cover this hole up with uh, maybe six inches of dirt, and I plant an orange tree on top of this thing. What happens to this orange tree? You guys know it's going to grow great. <laughs> so the question really is, after the tree gives oranges, can you eat it? And the answer is absolutely yes. Is there any E. coli in there? Absolutely none. So how did this happen? So that's kind of like how you got to kind of look at natural farming. Okay. Um, so if you can just keep that picture in, in, in your head and, and, you know, try to challenge yourself with it. Okay, the other thing is, um, how many of you own one of these? <laughs> well, a lot of you guys own it, but you guys don't want to own up to it. Um, <laughs> I have two brilliant sons who uh, write software. And so they're always coming home and telling me, Dad, you gotta get one of these things. Or you, know, you gotta get a smartphone. Or you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And I kind of never wanted to touch one of these things because one, you gotta learn some new things to make this thing work. And it's rather intimidating. So they come back home and they said, Dad, did you get one yet? No. What, what's the problem? We can teach you. Well, and then you start thinking, oh, I don't know. And then a year later, they came back and said, Dad, here's the machine. We're going to coach you. So for two days, they coached me. And in the process, they, you know, because they're programmers, they can program all the stuff that I use right into this thing. And once you start learning it and, and actually work it, you find that it's a tremendous benefit. Okay, now, the point I'm trying to drive at is, I have no idea how this works. I don't know. I don't know what hardware it uses, I don't know what processor it uses, I don't even know how big the RAM is. And I'm not even sure which version it is. All I know is, this thing is fantastic. When you're working with uh, natural farming, we got to take it to the next step. We're working with things that we don't quite totally understand, and you're taking a step in faith to some degree, similar to how you take a step with this. But you got to realize that it is cutting edge technology. And it's very difficult to realize that it's cutting edge technology. You're dealing with something that is alive. You know, with, with these things, you can actually fly a drone. You can fly a drone in this room and it flies by itself. I mean, you just tilt. I mean, they got software adaptions where you can just tilt and drive the drone or helicopter around the room and not crash anything. That's how fantastic and powerful this thing is. The point I'm driving at is the microorganisms are alive. So when you work at it in the ground, it's alive. And guess what? The learning curve on one generation of this is 16 weeks. 
it's hard to understand what 16 weeks can do, but in 16 weeks, it turns four generations in one year. That's how fast the technology in this thing is moving, and that's why they can create such fantastic things. Like they can transfer satellite things and GPS right into your smartphone, right into this. Microorganisms turn one generation in one day. That's 365 generations in one year. So this thing is alive. It's in the ground, it's sensing faster than you can sense. And guess what? It works 365 days a year and it doesn't care if it sleeps and it doesn't care about whether it's daytime or nighttime. It's still working. The focus on natural farming is to create the environment so it can survive and you can utilize it. That's cutting edge. We don't have any other thing that is this far advanced. We gotta take the position of trying to figure out how to use it, how to maximize the benefits. Now let me take one more giant step further in front. Natural farming is a system that can be used. But the biggest thing that I think we all are not focusing on is wellness. If you Google up <coughs> nutrient-dense products, nutrient-dense foods, you will find an amazing array of information regarding human health. That's the next big frontier that we're going to get into. Nutrient-dense foods are really helping the human body self-correct, just like parts of natural farming help the ground self-correct, helps the pigs and the animals that we work with self-correct. Nutrient-dense foods does the same thing to our bodies. Why is this important? It's because we are running a health system based on reaction. We are running a farming system based on reaction. We're not going forward. We're not being pro uh, proactive. If we're not careful, we're going to have a kidney dialysis facility in every shopping center. Because what are the um, crucial elements in your body that's the body's filter? Kidney, liver, pancreas, and your lungs. Where are the health problems coming up really fast? All of those areas. So when you're dealing with natural farming, you are able to produce nutrient-dense products that's very clean. You're producing plants that are higher in oxygen, antioxidants, higher in minerals, higher in vitamins, no pesticides, no herbicides, no uh, hydrocarbon compounds. When you're producing animal products, you're producing animal products that have no hormones, no antibiotics, and no vaccines. So just think about this. Which comes first? Nutrient-dense foods, clean product, health. 